uh, yeah, something like that. I don't know. So the, <laughs> my Zoom is starting to talk to me too. Interesting things we have now. Um, anyhow, let's get started with uh, the topic of today, uh, which is beliefs, beliefs. And if I go back in my own childhood and when I was younger, I, um, you know, when I was, uh, when I was younger and um, Matthew is coming back on board. Uh, I actually was a kid that actually always wanted to abide rules. Uh, that's just, that was just me. I, I really abide rules. I was very scary to break rules. Uh, and whether that's, um, whether that's a thing that is more from kids that were, you know, baby boomers. I'm a late baby boomer, so I still have some of that. And a lot of baby boomers, they, you know, they just they have respect for authority. But strangely enough, late baby boomers, that's also where the hippies are coming from and were thrown over all kind of things. I never was one of those kids, right? I grew up in the 60s, I, uh, in the 70s. I must honestly say, honestly say maybe on the outside, I looked so, like someone who was, you know, like changing all the rules and stuff, but I didn't. I, I really always wanted to abide the rules. And uh, I definitely also like to please people. You know, what the reason for that is, that's a whole psychological thing. Maybe you should talk to my therapist <laughs> about this and then you can find it out whether it was my dad who was, you know, really like an authority figure and would, you know, punish us severely if we didn't follow his rules, whether that was the case, whether it was just the time, I don't know, my character, or maybe it was just a false belief that I started to develop in my mind very young. Uh, as it is. But, you know, as old as I am right now, I'm 60, I still feel that I am tend to uh, please people. I have a hard time to say no, <clears throat> to be honest. And I am very, um, very conservative, I noticed, if it comes to following the rules. That is to say, rules that make sure that we don't live in a very chaotic world, right? So let's take rules like driving in the on the right side of the road if you are in Europe or in the US or on the left side of the road if you're in Australia or the UK or Singapore or any of those countries right so I like that do I always follow the speed limits no so I think I just challenge the rules a little bit somewhat but it's kind of in what I believe is the acceptable but I do think that we you know need to follow the rules because we live in a society to some extent so I'm not talking about those rules rules that you know are there to make sure that we have at least some sort of a manageable society and so and make sure that we don't live in a too chaotic world uh, so I do I still do like rules to be honest right very much like that but at the same time <clears throat> Later in life, and specifically in the last 10 years, I start to look more and more closely at what are beliefs. And I must honestly say that's definitely because of my work as a coach. You know, as a coach, my job, you know, frequently involves, <clears throat> you know, how do I say that? Identifying distorted beliefs in my clients, you know, and understanding how they were formed and helping them to learn more skeptical about their own beliefs. And I often talk about, and you have heard me talk about my in my podcast and also here on the place about what I call false belief. So let me, let, let us just do a few false beliefs. And if you are with me on Facebook Live or here on Zoom, just take a pen and paper and write down, maybe you have a few of those false beliefs that we all do, by the way. Uh, the trick is, do you recognize them as false belief? And are there maybe beliefs that you don't think they're a false belief? And in the end, they are false beliefs. So, um, for instance, age is often a false belief. I am too old to do fill in the blank. Yeah, there are definitely a couple of things that you're all too old for to do. Right. So if you know, if I say I want to dance in the youth league, I'm too old for that. Clearly, there is a number to it, and the number says 16 years, 21 years, and I'm too old for that, right? But in a lot of things, uh, we actually have accepted uh, that we are too old for. And it's really strange if you are at my age, 60, and you hear uh, someone who says 28, and he says, I am too old to start a dance career. I think, what? <laughs> 
you crazy? And in, in their life, I could understand that, right? I'm getting already too old. And that's how body changes um, over time, it sure does. But strangely enough, strangely enough, it also changes because, yeah, Matthew said I started to dance at 45. Actually, I started my whole dance career. I think I told you, all of you, that uh, quite late if it comes to professional dancers when they start their dance career, right? <clears throat> But strangely enough, we found more and more scientific evidence and, and, and mind the word scientific here because I come back to it, that it could also be because of our thinking that our bodies start to change and age, right? It's because we start to accept that we are a certain age, then our bodies start to change according to what we believe in this case, an old person needs to look like. Is that is that is that is that a weird thing or not? More and more evidence comes to that. Now there is wear and tear, like with a car or with anything we use. There is wear and tear, so that those those are no normal things. But it is maybe not as black and white as we think it is, right? That's a false belief. Um, another false belief is money. You know, a lot of people say if I have a lot of money, then I will be happy. That is a big bogus false belief, right? I'm not saying if you have no money that you will eat, that's easy to be happy. That of course is not true, right? <clears throat> but if I, will, if I have a lot of money, then I will be happy. There's also another false belief with money to say people say money doesn't make you happy. Well, no money doesn't make you happy either, right? So both are false beliefs. So it is still a choice, right? There is also a false belief specifically with people who don't have a lot of money that people with money are bad people. Actually, I see a lot of people with a lot of money and they're really good people and they do a lot more good things in the world than the people with no money, right? But doesn't mean that there are better people, but there are good people e equally as much. It has nothing to do with money, right? So it's a lot of false beliefs, right? And if you look at history, we had many false beliefs that we just threw overboard. And if you would say them right now, they would be politically completely incorrect, right? But Think about the racial differences we had in the past where there was a true belief that people with a different race were just, you know, not as strong as someone with another race, right? The whole German Aryan, you know, uh, uh, racial thinking is coming from that. But mind you here, right? Now we condemn those Germans at those times and we should, at least the Germans of those times, not the Germans of today, they are <laughs> our friends. But if you think that that was only true in, in Germany, then you're hugely mistaken. That racial thinking in the 20s and 30s was widespread. Actually, the biggest center of racial thinking was right here in the United States. I was not in Germany. If you go to the UK, if you go to other countries, there was definitely a belief that white races were better than races with other color. Luckily, we got over that. And people who believed that were not immediately wrong people. It's just something we believe. Does that make sense? It's not true. And most people that are right of their mind, they study and they go, okay, man, that's a belief we should throw away. And they did, right? That's why we have all these beautiful multicultural uh, societies that we have. But are these beliefs still there? Yeah, there are still people with those beliefs. Are they wrong? They're absolutely wrong because there are false beliefs, right? So those are the obvious ones. Are there maybe less obvious ones? Probably because if you just think yourself back in the time when I was talking about those racial beliefs, for a lot of people, that was just for them, that just was the way it was. It's not, they were not immediately wrong people, trust me. You know, it's, um, I can give you definitely an example of my, I'm, I'm not talking about white people alone. Let's talk about colonial times, right? I am a child of colonial times and I was born out of parents who actually were colonials, right? Although I look Asian, but I was not, a nation. I was born as a colonial people. And one of the things my dad said, you know, about, you know, people in, um, in this case, Indonesian said, 
you cannot pay Indonesians more than they need to earn for one day because if you pay them for two days, they don't come the next day. That was just a belief they had. And it's true, it's, you know, talk about the English colonials. They believed the same thing. Even the people themselves believed it. But it was not true, but it's something we believed. And some people behave like that. Think about the women, right? Um, you know, there are definitely some false beliefs that we have, that women have, but not only women, men too, but I'm talking sometimes specifically to women because a lot of my work has to do with women, is beliefs that, you know, um, is, it, it's stronger in, uh, in a women's mind to believe that in the end, you know, all people are nice people. No, not all people are nice people. I think all people are born as nice people. But in the end, not all people are nice people. <laughs> Right, but some people believe that. And I like to believe those things. And I hope that we start to live in a world where that is true. But at the moment, we have to teach our children, and I have a daughter, maybe that I'm a little bit stronger focused on women, that we have to teach them also about the things that are go can go wrong in the world, right? So another time I will do uh, I will do uh, I will do a whole topic about beliefs and false beliefs if people that are abused, you know, when they are abused and why they are more likely to get abused. Yeah. So that's uh, one of the things that most people know that I wrote a book, Broken Silence is very much connected to that book and that I'm starting to do workshops um, First of all, mostly in the Dallas Metroplex. I'm just plugging in my own commercials here for just a second, if you allow me. But um, one of these things that uh, that I want to do, and we call them self-defense classes, by the way, but they're not all self-defense classes, by the way. One of the things that I want to do is uh, teach people that there are false beliefs, right? And there are actually 10 common false beliefs with people that are more likely to get abused than other people. Isn't that a scary thing to know? And it's all things we believe. And if I mention them to you, you would think, really? Yeah, really. Um, so just let's do one or two of them so that we get a little bit of feel what I'm talking about. And then we move on to the more general stuff um, as we move forward. Um, all right, let me see if I can find it real quick, because of course not, right? And if I was really prepared, I had it really ready. Well, I do, by the way. I just want to have the right ones. Oh, yeah. So, um, so a false belief of people that are more likely to abuse is saying, hey, if I act naive and innocent, people will take care of me and I won't have to grow up. Happens a lot with boys. We call it extended boyhood, right? Happens sometimes also with girls, right? If they, if I look at you know some cultures where uh, there is a strong belief, I want to get married as soon as I can get, so that someone can take care of me. That's a very common belief in a lot of societies. More than you think. Um, um, some people actually do believe I don't have the right to stand up for myself. Still, some believe they, they since still some women believe that and some ethnic groups believe that, right? Because it's so ingrained in them. Um, another false belief is, you know, anger is a destructive emotion. And I talked to you about that anger is an equally important emotion as any other emotion. It's just the way you express them that makes it right or wrong, right? But you should be entitled to be angry. So some people believe that they are not allowed to be angry. Yeah. So those kind of beliefs we're, we're talking about. Yeah. Some uh, Matthew wrote to me, right? Religion. Yeah. It's well, definitely one of the topics that we address today. So um, it's good to think about, you know, if we talk about uh, beliefs, where are those beliefs coming from? Why do we have those false beliefs, right? To have a little bit of understanding. Yesterday, I was talking to Irene, um, and I, uh, we were talking about the same similar topic, topics. He asked me about these things, and I explained to her that our brains, which is basically the way of our thinking, 
that is the organ that requires most of the time mo the most energy when we use our body. Yeah, we use most of the time our brain uses the most energy. It's a very energy consuming organ. Um, so hence, uh, if you also know that human beings are actually more designed to become as efficient as possible. So we like to use for the things that we do, the least amount of energy. So by default, thinking costs a lot of energy. And we sometimes joke about it because then we say to someone else, can you not think? No, the person can think. But most of the time, this is not a false belief, we are too lazy to think. We seriously are, everyone is, because it will cost us energy. Now, guess what? I make this whole line. If you followed me on my in my book, uh, the five, um, you learn about the five life energies, and it starts with the physical energy. I always talk about that you need to sleep well. You need to get fresh air. You need to get light, and you need to, uh, you know, you need to uh, feed yourself well, and you need to get exercise. That's those are the ingredients that you need to do to optimize your physical energy. Now, guess what? If your physical energy is not optimized, your thinking center will not function in an optimal condition too. And hence, we actually really don't want to think. Does that make sense? A lot of people don't see that logic. Uh, uh, let me repeat it again. If you don't have enough energy just to go by in a day, sleep, food, light, air, uh, what was the other one, exercise, then we don't have enough energy. So say that you have a pretty physical job to do. To think on top of that, that's a lot of energy you need. Don't blame anyone who has a very strong physical job that he has, uh, you, know, not a, a, you know, not enough energy. So hence, you know, let me go make a quick link to dancing. This is why dancing is so important and so interesting for us, because if at least you follow my side of dancing, I like to create intelligent dancers that keep constantly thinking, right? That's a really tough job. You have to use your body and you have to stay alert with your mind. No wonder we, that we cannot do that for hours in a row. We would be completely exhausted, right? But dancers, in general, I mean, everyone, I know Matthew started to dance when he was 45, that is about 15 years ago, I revealed your age, uh, Matthew. But if you just think about the health changes you have seen because of dancing, you would have to agree with me that is tremendous. Because you work on both sides, you need to be physical and mentally strong all the time. It's an incredible, it's an incredible thing. Anything you can do that, I mean, okay, Matthew and I here are together here on Zoom. Anything you can do that uh, to, uh, to, to do that, do it, right? We like dancing, but there, I'm sure there are other things that are equally strong. Uh, in fact, to be honest, there are not so many. Einstein Institute here in California actually researched that, but that's just between you and me. You know, don't tell that to anyone that's secret, but actually, it turned out that dancing is one of the few activities that is doing that to a pretty deep, you know, extent. And that's why it's also one of the things that helps prevent or at least slow down Alzheimer. I'm just saying it, there was an NPO documentary last night in the Netherlands on television. If you haven't seen it yet, just look at it uh, because there was one guy who was talking about all the benefits of dancing. Just go look at it, all the things that I give you away for free today. It's incredible. Anyhow, this is the reason why we have false beliefs is because we need to use our thinking center. And you know, what is it? It is actually a basic principle of surviving. We need to just quickly think. And in the past, when we were just living in the wilderness and we had to think quickly, we just can only react in a way that we either have learned from our parents or from our experience. Right, does that make sense? We learn it from our parents or from experience. So if we come in a situation where a saber-toothed tiger is attacking us, you know, we get in what we call a flight or a fright mode, right? And it, that's learned behavior, to be honest. It's learned behavior. 
And uh, the fright mode, not so smart because then the saber tooth will eat you. The flight mode, you have to be also really smart because outrun the saber tooth is not an option, right? So you have to become really smart. You have to learn that. So the next time we get into a frightful situation, we start to behave like that. And trust me, even today, that behavior that was there from the saber to tiger is still in us. But we don't need that anymore because those are false belief now. There are no saber to tigers anymore. We can really stop and think about the situation if we are in danger. Not all the time if the house is on fire, right? But we have definitely other ways to cope with these things. Does that make any sense? So, uh, so our brain is constantly looking for shortcuts to predict what the next situation will be. That's basically what our brain is doing. It's constantly doing it in the short uh, amount of way. So the way to escape that, because most of the time we don't need a shortcut, we actually have time to do a, a long cut, if that's a word, right? It's not a word. Think about dancing, right? If we do a shortcut, we only dance technically well. If we do a long cut, which is not a word, I just invented it at the moment, we do all these things on top of that. We do dynamics, we do emotional expression. We are busy with a lot of things that has nothing to do with going efficiency, efficient around the floor. Our brain thinks that, you know, dancing is just going around the floor, but the way we are trained as dancers is that we are there to perform and to entertain the audience. If you don't have that in your mind, you fall back and just going as efficient as you can around the floor and you think I did great. Actually, you were a crappy dancer, you just were a great athlete, right? Does that make sense? It's a good analogy, right? Therefore, running the tracks is a lot easier than doing quick step because running the tracks has only to do, do it as fast as you can. Doing a quick step has to do with do it as elegant as you can, do it as entertaining as you can, do it as emotional as you can, and so on, and so on, right? So we have to interrupt our own brain because our brain constantly wants to do shortcuts, right? That's why still trainers think that muscle memory is a great thing. That's only making shortcuts in your brain instead of helping you to expand and what I call create spaces in which you can see where you can perform, right? The shortcut is go as fast as you can from A to B. The space between A and B is where you perform as an artist. The space where that I create now is where I can talk to people in an engaging way. You know, the less engaging way is typing this out to you, sending it to you in an email, and no one is reading it. That would be a very fast way of getting the information. But that is not helpful for you. Does that make any sense? Right? It is way more complicated. So in um, Deepak Chopra calls that, you know, he called that the space between the sounds. If you think about music, and if you think about how we listen, we think we listen to the beats but the beats would have no meaning if there is no space between the beats. Does that make sense? But what does our body want? What does our shortcutted mind want? We want to go as fast from A to B. We want to draw straight lines all the time as fast as we can. What we know from life, that is not the case. Life goes like this. But a false belief is that it is always go to the shortest line. Does that make sense? That's what our false beliefs are. And it's not because we are human beings. So anyhow, um, so once a belief has taken hold, right? It's very hard to get rid of. And it's not because you're dumb and it's not because you're old or it's not because you're Asian and it's not because you are whatever you think you are, it's just because when it gets hold into our brain, those connections are made, it's very hard to get rid of. Now, let me give you an example from the past. There was a long time that we believed that the earth was flat, right? Everyone believed it and it was the absolute truth for everyone with a few exceptions there. 
Copernicus was one of those few people who challenged that. He saw that things were moving around the earth and he said, well, it cannot be that the earth is the center because, and then he started to figure out, hey, the, the earth is turning around the sun, which was already blasphemy at that time, right? And then to do that, he figured out, well, then we need to have a round earth, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Otherwise we would always be in the light instead of dark light, dark light, dark light, right? So he started to understand that and therefore he reasoned out he, did, he used his brain, which probably cost him a lot of energy and social pain, by the way. You know, another reason why we don't want to kick out these false beliefs because then other people start to judge us. Does that make sense? So two reasons, it costs us more energy and we get uh, uh, our society against us. Copernicus was one of them. Anyhow, um, doesn't, you know, has to say that most of us, you know, I saw just recently, a program on television that there are actually truly still people who believe that the earth is flat. And those are very serious people because they say, look around you, everything is flat here. If the earth would be flat, my floor would be also not flat. Yeah, that sounds really dumb. <laughs> in fact, those people were not that dumb except in that area, right? So anyhow, that was a good, that's a good example. Of, uh, of that. So it's very hard to change. That's one of the reasons why we uh, get rid, don't get rid of these things. I already, you know, um, say to you is uh, the social dimension of having some of these false beliefs, right? Think about the same example that I had with the flat earth and a round earth. In most cases, if you would say, I think that this guy Copernicus is right, you would have most of the society against you. So that requires, again, a lot of thinking, and then you give up on that. Like, I don't want that. I don't want to have all these discussions and stuff like that. So uh, let's not do that, right? Um, so, you know, and that's why science came into existence, right? But science values the changing of minds through disproving previously held beliefs and challenging received authority with new evidence. That's basically the definition of science, right? Let me repeat that. Science values the changing of minds to disproving previously held beliefs and challenging received authority with new evidence, right? So um, science is good. Science is not everything, by the way, you know, because there are actually two worlds we need to think about. We need to think about the world that we kind of like is not so relative, you know, gravity, you know, that's a world now the round earth, let's go at least with the people that, you know, it's fact-based. I call it fact-based things, that things are more on the outside. But if you think about it, that's the smallest world there is. And there is a world that is in your mind, which is purely opinion and agreement based. And then you could say, yeah, but how can there be a real, they're both real worlds and they're all different for everyone. That's the scary part of it. But if you think about things that we accept to be true, calories, you know, if you think about calories, no one can actually see them. Did you ever see a calorie? No one saw a calorie, but we start to believe them. And we is now one of the most discussed thing in any health program, in any fitness program, that you have. Now I can tell you, I had a long martial art career. My teacher never taught us anything about calories at all. And I was in a, in a super good shape. Does that make sense? You don't need to know anything about calories to have a, well, a good and healthy life. That's a false belief. Does that make sense? You don't need all these things to know. You don't need to be a scientist or have a PhD degree today to have a healthy life. It feels like it nowadays. You cannot even go to the supermarket without an encyclopedia under your arm. Well, in this case, under your phone, you know? So those are false beliefs. Does that make sense? Meditation, it does exist and it's really good for you, but no one has seen it, right? Did you see, did you, do you see stillness? You know, you can't see it, right? But we know it's good for us. But in a way, it's something that is called, truly in our mind and it's opinion and agreement based doesn't mean that it's always bad could be really good for you right 
God. Let's talk about religion. God is, you know, one of the most accepted things, but we've never seen it. Well, maybe 2000 years ago, we saw Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, which I do, by the way, but it's just in my mind. There's no proof. There's proof that there was a person who was Jesus. And there's a lot of proof. Actually, there's more proof that there was a Jesus than there was, than, than there was Julius Caesar. Do you, do you ever know that, by the way? There are only like five books written on Julius Caesar in that time when he was born, you know, and there are like, I don't know, I cannot even fill this room. I mean, I cannot even fill this room. It's not enough of evidence that there was a guy who called Jesus is around the world. And actually there's a lot of account of the things that he did, right? The only thing you cannot prove is he truly the son of God, right? And by default, you cannot prove that there is God. You can only believe that there's God. doesn't make it less true, but it's just, we have to understand that that is only my truth. And maybe it's only Matthew's truth or Irene, if she's still listening or someone else, which is, I respect what you believe. Does that make sense? It's just not fact-based. So please, let's not start to fight wars over things that are not fact-based because it's not. And I'm not saying it's a bad belief. I have some of those. Right? I'm just saying we should think a little bit different about those beliefs. Let's do another thing that you don't believe. What about corporations? We talk about them all the time. We talk about big corporations. Do you know they only exist on paper? They are paper made organizations. Uh, but yeah, I can see the building. Okay, but the building can go away and the corporation is still there. Or, you know, a corporation is actually a construct in our mind. Does that make sense? If you take out the people, the organization is away. That's a really hard one to, to wrap your head around. And there are more of these things. Laws in general, there's no fact-based things. Those are made by us. They are agreements in our mind. And I tell them to Matthew, so now we understand the law too. And law and, and Matthew is, tells them to fight, so we understand the laws too. Right? We all agree to these things. They're not fact-based. We go counterclockwise on the dance floor. Is there a reason for it? Well, I think someone did that once, right? I always joke about it. That's only true on the Northern Hemisphere. On the Southern Hemisphere, we, we dance cl clockwise. It's just, you know, that's what it is. Um, marriage, you know, it's an agreement we make in our minds. Does that make sense? It's not a thing. It's not fact-based. No one has to, that's a belief. And, and it's, maybe it's a good belief if you believe in marriage. Right? I'm not saying you shouldn't. I believe in it. Uh, I, I'm just saying those are not truths, right? Those are things that you believe in and therefore you have an opinion about it and that's okay. But it's also okay if someone doesn't because it's a belief and you can throw it away if you want to, right? Okay, let me do a big one here. The borders that we have in countries. Now, if you live in the UK, it's very easily, right? You drive long enough, you fall off the island, right? But if you go from the Netherlands to Belgium, there is not a line that you cross, you know, where you can see it. These are all made up borders, right? These, these are in our mind. We agree to them. And it's okay that we abide and follow these things, but we can throw them away. Who says that it's not better to have just one big country that we call Earth? You know, who says that? It's just in our mind. I, I can guarantee you, if there were aliens and they were attack us tomorrow, <laughs> right, by the millions, see how fast we come together and fight those aliens. <laughs> it will happen very fast, right? So if you just go back in time and you go to Europe, I don't know how many kingdoms we had, but there are countless kingdoms. And, and, and counties and all these kind of little countries. And then they came together in one big Germany and, and they came together in one big other country, France and stuff like that. But you know, United States, it was just tribal. It was all of, you know, what we call, you know, disrespectfully Indian, but you know, native Indian people here. 
they are all their borders and we just made it into the United States. And if you look at the lines in the United States, very arbitrary, but we respect them, I'm not saying it's wrong, but those are beliefs, it has nothing to do with facts. You know, where Texas ends and where Oklahoma starts is not fact-based. Someone agreed to draw the line there. And therefore, if we want to, we can redraw the lines. And that's where I want you to start to think a little bit more for yourself. And that costs a lot of energy. So the first thing you need to do is if you already feel, oh man, I don't want to do that. Maybe you should work first on your energy. Because if you truly want to make a growth in your life, you know, moving forward, doesn't matter what age you are, the younger you are, the better maybe, you know, you can make a change in your life that you cannot believe. And it's a challenge we start today. It is June the 1st. So everyone who's hopping on board with us, we are going to make a tremendous change from today on. For the simple reason, there are no saber tooths anymore. So to throw away some of these beliefs that we had, right? Except, uh, except Matthew has one. It doesn't cost you so much anymore. Most of the risk is very easy to take, to be honest, right? If I now say, I don't believe in God, there is no, well, maybe there are a few uh, idiotic fanatics here that kick down my door and then kill me over it. But most places we can safely say, I'm sorry, I don't believe in God anymore. Or the other way around, you can safely say, hey, I do believe in God. And I don't live in the Middle East where they can chop off my head. You know, if I be something else, right? In some of Middle East countries, so excuse me if I'm a little bit going at the two, you know, make two shortcuts myself, but you see those things in some countries, you cannot say these things. And they are false beliefs, right? Because I can choose to believe in God, right? I did, but that's my belief. And I realize that it's my belief. And therefore I can be very respectful to someone who has a different belief. Does that make sense? That's what it's all about. It's not about whether my belief is the right belief. It is understanding what is, you know, a fact-based world and an abstract-based world, which is based upon beliefs. And there's nothing wrong with beliefs as long as they abide a few rules. Hmm, Sha, are you now not going to contradict yourself a little bit? Because that's a little bit why we're here at the place, right? First of all, if you go very quickly over to what I talked about, is that a lot of our beliefs are coming from our childhood. It's just the way we were raised, right? You think about a lot of things. Why do you take your spoon in your right hand and your fork in your left hand? It's just the way we were raised. You know, it's a belief. We can switch it around. My mom would could get nuts because we're not allowed to. We have to do that. Oh, you know, your knife is right. You let, we had to hold it in a certain way. I get still a little bit annoyed if someone takes his fork and put it right in the meat and start to saw through the meat. I think, wow, can you not just do it a little bit more elegant, right? But these are all beliefs, right? You know, you need to eat with your mouth closed. It's a little bit nice to watch if instead of yes, but it's a belief, right? There's nothing right or wrong. I'm not killing you with it if you don't, right? You know, when we yawn in my in my household, I had to put my hand in front of my mouth. I see a lot of people here, like, whoa, I can actually see what they had for breakfast. But I thought, like, oh, that's so rude to do that. You know, in my culture, if you tap someone older on the head, that's a huge insult. How can it be an insult for the other person if he doesn't even know it was an insult? If I do this in a lot of cultures, that's a huge insult. But if I don't know it insults you, how can you be blaming me? Once you told me, then I say, okay, next time I want to take that into account, but don't kill me now for it, right? Those are beliefs, childhood beliefs. Then we have a lot of beliefs that are coming from authorities, church, you know, governments, you know, societies, all kind of authorities. If you dance, you are either WDC or WDSF, all kind of beliefs build up because of authorities. Some are just there for a good reason, but a lot of them can be challenged because time has changed too, right? And I think we should. 
right? Uh, I'm connected to a pretty strong group of influencer dancers now lately, and we are definitely out there to challenge some of these old rules. And are we succeeding? I don't know, right? But some of these beliefs, it's about time that we change them just for the good of dancing and the dancers, right? Um, where are other beliefs coming from? The need to belong. We all want to belong. <laughs> and therefore we do sometimes things uh, that actually causes us false belief. So if I do and behave in a certain way, then I get accepted by a group. Hence, that's a false belief because maybe you don't need to be accepted. Does that make sense? Social proof is almost the same thing. Guess why uh, Facebook is so nice? Because we can play those false beliefs so nicely, right? I can, you know, if I show myself always as a happy person on Facebook, I get more likes. Don't tell me it's not wrong because it's right. You see it all the time. If I can prove to everyone that I'm successful, I get more likes. Well, guess what? I'm not always successful. You know, I'm, you know, financially at the moment after COVID-19, not doing so well at all, right? But I can still deliver what I need to deliver in the place. So that belief doesn't have to be true. I don't have to make a picture with a Lamborghini behind me to get the people to show me on Facebook. But a lot of people do that, right? You know, social proof. Another thing is I want to hide my insecurities. It's also a good reason to take on a lot of false beliefs, right? If I dress well, if I have a beautiful lady, if I, you know, have certain stuff, then I'm looking a little bit more stronger and stuff in life. So a lot of reasons why we have. But let's, you know, take on the challenge and throw away some of these false beliefs and see which one you have and when you want not, right? First of all, and you know, you need to, of course, keep the beliefs that are worthwhile keeping. You know, any belief that has no trust in humanity, you need to try to kick out. <laughs> yeah. So any belief that has trust in humanity, you can keep, right? That's a good rule. I would say not imminence. Like I said, I might go a little bit against my own thing, but you need to set some rules here and there even if they're made up rules by Jean. In this case, I didn't make them up, by the way. Uh, a guy, Fishin Lakhiani, made them up it's from a book, uh, uh, The Code to the Extraordinary Mind. Some of the things that I said today are coming from this book. Not that you think that Jean is an incredible person. He's basically always rehashing what other people said. And uh, Fishin Lakhiani, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. You know, I think a year or two ago, I mentioned that book too. Um, yeah, we need to actually put more trust and hope in humanity. But there are a lot of rules that we have put in place that goes against the trust in humanity. You know, if you just look at the laws that the police inform them, and actually I'm pretty much a big fan of most police, by the way, not saying that all police people are good, but I'm glad they are there. But a lot of these rules, you know, if you make one mistake in life, you can get immediately, you know, I don't know, was it, wow, there is some leniency, but it's not a lot of leniency, right? People make mistakes, you know, let the one who never made a mistake come forward, right? Or throw the first stone, right? We have, we need to learn how to forgive. That is trust and hope in humanity. Don't immediately think only in punishment. Do you see? That's a big false belief. That's right there. We didn't even think about it. But we think about laws only in punishment. No, we need to think about laws in case of we have trust that you will do better the next time. Right? If someone makes mistakes over mistakes, this person probably needs help instead of punishment. That is trust in humanity. And that is changing beliefs. Number two, right? If a false belief that you have hurt other people, you know, kick it right out, <laughs> right? Most people that listen to me on the place, they don't have that. But, you know, I talked about racial things. I talk about maybe homophobia, you know, other things that you have. Think about the opinions you have that kind of could hurt other people, even only in your mind. Kick them out. Does that make sense? It makes you a better person. Right? And I'm not only talking to the people in the place. Of course, I'm talking to people live. All right. Then here are the things. 
after, after those first two, you can challenge to my account. If you abide those first two rules, you can do anything you want if it comes to the next three, culture or religion. Whatever you brought up to, uh, you know, Fishing here talks about he was brought up with the fact that he cannot eat cows, but he as a young boy wanted to eat a cow. Luckily, his parents were very open-minded, said, hey, in the end, it will be your choice. You, you won't die from it. It's just a culture belief that you cannot eat a cow. And so, and they, their, his parents, they like to abide those rules because of culture and other things, but they allowed the young kid to eat a hamburger at, you know, McDonald's. Now, there are other reasons why you should not eat McDonald's maybe, <laughs> but not because a cow is holy. Does that make sense? Culture or religion? What kind of rules do you have in your mind that you still think, maybe I have already been thinking about it. Maybe I should just not do it anymore. Who cares what the church says? Seriously, who cares what, as long as you still believe in humanity and if it don't hurt other people, who cares? Does that make sense? If you don't believe in God anymore, don't believe in God anymore. I'm okay with that. I do, <laughs> right? I'm not trying to convince you not to. I'm just trying to convince you to think, right? And throw your beliefs away. What are the things that you have learned as a kid that doesn't serve you well anymore? Many things. My dad said, start with distrusting every person that you encounter. By the time I was 12, I became a nasty person because I said, I don't trust you. I didn't even know the person. But that said, you know, but then you will meet people that you later on find out that you couldn't trust them at all. I said, later I said that, I'd rather take that. You know, I'd rather have eight or nine people that I couldn't trust afterwards, but at least I found that one person that I can trust. You know, that's my choice. He says, he said, and I'm, I'm, he just passed away, by the way. Sorry, that, but he told me, he called me naive. Well, that my belief is I rather be naive than always look this in the world. To some extent, you have to be a little bit careful, but to another extent, you know, be wisely naive, I would say. Another false belief, right, was coming from my a childhood. And another way to look at it, not so much a genre thing, but I mentioned it just because I mentioned the code of the extraordinary mind from Fish and Lacani. He talks a lot about, you know, does it serve my happiness? I honestly don't believe, there you go, that everything has to do with your own happiness. I honestly believe that I will be a much happier person if I serve other people well. That's what I believe. So I look for more for what does it serve other people happiness? And if it doesn't, kick it out. <laughs> you know, if your belief doesn't really serve someone else's happiness, you might want to kick it out. And if you do that, you look at your life, you will see you have a lot, a lot of beliefs. It's crazy if you start to think about it, how many false beliefs you have. And our first step that we do today is just, just challenge those beliefs. And then later on, we're going to replace them maybe with some stronger things that serves our um, beliefs a little bit well, you know, a little bit more up to date, no more saber tooths, but maybe there are other things we need to work on. Does that make sense? All right, so this was Sean with, uh, you know, a, a start of uh, challenging our beliefs. Um, not sure if we continue this next week, but it definitely will be a recurring topic uh, on the place. Uh, I'll say bye-bye to the people uh, on Facebook. Uh, Arin, can you really quick if there, check if there were any questions there for me on, um, or maybe I need to do it myself because I think she is working. But that's no. All. No questions. All right, then uh, that's good. Thank you so much. Then I'll, I'll see you guys hopefully next week on Facebook Live. Matthew and I will stay on a little bit here, chat a little bit on Zoom. Uh, join me next time on Zoom if you want to. And uh, if not, then I'm always happy that you guys follow me on Facebook Live. Agree and disagree with me. 
I, you know, that's the whole thing, you know, you don't always have to agree with me. I'd rather you not actually, to be honest, but I hope I challenge your thinking a little bit today. All right, bye-bye. I close this here and I also 